Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and Synology has sent me this for review. This is a RackStation RS1221 Plus. Now, they make two models of this. It's an RS1221 Plus is the one in front of me with a single power supply, and an RS1221 RP Plus is the dual power supply model. I didn't want to bring this up right away because I thought this was an odd design choice by Synology. This right here is the single power supply, but it's not like it's just missing one. In the picture you see here on their website is the dual power supply model, which are, you know, your standard kind of server style hot swap from the back power supplies. But what they've done here is a little bit different. Let's take a look at the overhead. We have a... Uh, power supply mounted this way, not this way. I mean, what obviously that brings to mind is how do you get it out of there if it goes bad? Well, you can, it's just under the motherboard. So the chassis themselves are absolutely different on these. And I thought that was one of the first distinctions that kind of struck me as odd. And other than that, they're the same exact motherboard and specs are going to be the same. But if you want to know the difference between the two, it isn't just the fact that one has a single power supply and the other one has redundant. It's the fact that they put the power supply in and made it, well, I would say a little bit more challenging to remove. So if I had to swap the power supply in this one, or if you had bought the single hoping you could add a second power supply later and save a few dollars. It doesn't work that way either, but swapping the power supply does mean removing the motherboard because it's underneath it. I don't see, I mean, maybe I could pull the chassis out from, uh, you can see how it's not as easy to get this out because they put it right in here. But the MSRP on this model is $12.99 and the dual power supply model is $16.99. Other than that, all the other specs are going to be the same, which is an AMD Ryzen processor. It's the V1500B four core eight thread. They both have an eSATA port, two USB threes, four gigs of ECC memory. That's what they ship with and four one gig ports. Now there is a PCIe in here so you can expand, but that's where things get a little bit well, confusing. And let me explain real quick here. And maybe confusing is not the right word, but disappointed. So I've gotten used to the Synologies having some of their higher end models offering the NVMe cache. They did not offer one on this, probably to keep the price lower, but nonetheless, it doesn't have 10 gig either. Now, not having 10 gig and not having that means, well, with one slot, is it either or? Actually, Synology does have a solution for this. And the MSRP on this is 249. This is the 10 gig and M2 SSD cache all at once. I think it's kind of clever that they have a solution for it, but I would like to see one or the other, like just a 10 gig port on here because offering the caching is not bad. I do like that. It's not always necessary. It does offer speed improvements under certain workloads. I would have liked at least a spot on the board as an option to mount it, but I figured I'd at least mention that it's not on this model right here. Now this is an eight bay model. And so you can certainly put quite a few in here. It has an expansion tray that you can get for it of four more bays totaling in 12 drives that you could potentially expand this to. We've been testing it here for a little over a week and a half running different workloads. Um, that is why we added both a 10 gig card and we added eight gigs of RAM. So we wanted a little bit more memory in this device so we could test it further. But as it shipped, it only had the Synology 4 gigs in here. And this is our card. We did not have one of the Synology dual cards for testing this. Now, if we want to take a quick look at the back, and this is like I had said, how they put that power supply in there. Matter of fact, you might be wondering, how do you plug in a power supply that's sideways in here? This actually reminds me of the old printer ones. They give you actually two of these cords, one of these and an extension, and it goes in like this. Now, the good news is pulling on it like this means it's not going to come out easy. So, uh, I don't mind that it's plugged in sideways. Actually, that's really nice because if you slide this in and out of the rack, it's not going to pop out. But it makes sure you have this handy. If you forgot the power cord and thought a standard one would get in there, that angle will not make it with your uh, standard power. It is a standard cord. It's just at a right angle, which not uncommon, but still a little unusual. Here across the back, there's those four one gig ports. There's the 10 gig Intel X520 card that we put in here. That's something we had at the office. And then we have the two fans on the back. Now let's take a little bit closer look at the motherboard. Now with the lid on, we get pretty good airflow. So we don't have any dedicated CPU fan, just a large heat sink. And with the airflow going this way, even our 10 gig card is still well cooled. Nothing seemed to be hot at all after letting it run, provided you keep the cover on top of it. The memory is right here. And then right here is where we added in the extra RAM for our testing. And I do like that the battery's right on top and accessible. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight screws all the way around holding the lid on. So it does stay on nice and snug, no wobbles there. It does have a little system speaker for beep. And then we'll slide it forward and we'll look, we have two fans here, pretty beefy ones. And because this is a meant to be in essentially a data center or server rack, it's not gonna be the absolute quietest fans, but they certainly have quite a bit of airflow. There's nothing else really serviceable here. I'm assuming this device right here is probably where the operating system base lives on this device. It's not really meant to be serviceable or removable. It has kind of an unusual connector we looked at on the bottom of it. But back to where that power supply is, the only way I see is maybe if you took the side, this appears to be screwed in right here, you could probably take this out to slide off the back. But that would also mean disengaging some of the way this is pushed against it. And uh, like I said, it's not going to be an easy change out if there's everything anything goes wrong with the power supply, it is nestled underneath here in order to get to it. There's really nothing too remarkable about the front of it. We have a power button on the front. We have your standard kind of Synology trays. Everything feels nice. It's got the standard Synology kind of hex lock that's on there. So not super secure, but good enough to keep people from doing that unless they stick their fingers or stick something in there and give that thing a little twist. And one thing Synology really wanted to highlight is that it's not very deep. So if you're putting this into a rack, you don't really have to worry about, you know, having it all that much depth behind you. It is 30 centimeters for this model and 38 centimeters for the dual power supply model. Fans go at full power just for a second when it starts and then go down pretty much. As you can tell, I'm recording next to it and... Uh, I don't know if it even know if the microphone's really picking it up, but the TV is pretty low on this. about 55 decibels once it's initialized. And I imagine if it's under enough load with enough drive, maybe these fans would wear up a little bit noisier, but it's even quieter from the front, of course. That's why I did this at the back. So I have the system booted up. It's running Synology Disk Station Manager 6.23, the latest available right now as of February, 2021. And it idles at around 65 watts. And I have the kilowatt over on it checking that out. Now, when it ramps up, it does take a little bit more wattage, but even under some of the workloads and some of the testing, we never really heard the fans ramp up on there. It seems to stay quite cool. And we have a couple virtual machines sitting right here. This is actually in a cluster mode with another Synology. I'll cover that in more in depth in a virtual machine manager in another video. But nonetheless, firing it up and connecting, which we have right here, Windows 10 on here, it works reasonably well. This is not exactly a powerhouse of a device in terms of virtualization, but it will run Windows 10 and other workloads, including Docker and all the other features that you get with Synology Disk Station Manager. Now, my overall on this device, other than, you know, kind of hoping it would have shipped with 10 gig, you know, I think that's a minor problem, but it is something that you can fix by doing what we did, either putting a card in or getting the Synology card. And if you need the caching, if that's something really necessary, well, that's an opportunity as well if you want to add that because that dual card I mentioned will kind of solve both problems at once with the only single card slot. The only other minor complaint, but it's worth noting, is if you get the single power supply model. Now, these do offer five-year warranties, but if you get the single power supply model and you have to swap the power supply, it's just not as easy as sliding one out and sliding it in. I kind of wish they would have, even if it was single, had that type of chassis on there. So if this was going to go into data center for convenience and that little bit of extra cost, I think the dual power supply model might be a little bit better in terms of that. So it depends on where your budget is. But nonetheless, buying a pair of these and setting up Synology to back up to another Synology is very, very easy to do. And I still really like the solution that Disk Station Manager provides for, well, just general ease of use and easy deployment. We've been using it more and more for a lot of things such as the active backup and having all those features that are built into here, which I'll leave a link to the video where I talk about some of the cool things we do with the Synology and some of the reasons we like their software. Um, yeah, I'll leave a link to that. It's definitely some good stuff. So hoping to see some more AMD stuff, maybe even some Epic stuff coming in the future. I'm not aware of any, but it seems like once they've started down the path and partnering with AMD to put something other than Intel on there, um, that's exciting. We're hoping to see more in the future. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. 
Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.